Good evening. Welcome to Holy Communion and worship of the Eucharist outside of Mass on this Tuesday within the octave of Easter. As we gather today, we are not able to celebrate the Mass as we do not have a priest. Let us be united in the Spirit of Christ with the Church around the world and celebrate our redemption in Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, the Lord invites us to his table to share in the body of Christ. Bless him for his goodness. As we prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Please be seated for tonight's first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other, he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See the eyes of the Lord are open, those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our souls waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? 
She thought it was a gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to Mary, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. In that first reading, of course, Peter is talking about the Holy Spirit being the ultimate evangelizer. And when you greet a neighbor, a co-worker, the Spirit is already there communicating the joy of the Lord from you to them, and believe it or not, from them to you. When you offer words of compassion to a friend, facing hardships, whatever they may be, the loss of a family member, the loss of a job, or whatever it is. The Spirit is there helping your friend to sense Christ's love through you. And it's an opportunity that arises where you can share a reason for hope. Because as Catholic Christians, that's one thing that we feel all the time is a sense of hope. The Spirit is there giving life to your words, just as he did for Peter on that day of Pentecost. Never underestimate the power of the Spirit. He's always with you, ready to give you what you need, ready to give you the courage to be bold, to go and do the things you don't think you could do, to prepare hearts and other people as well. Yes, it's a tough task, but we're up for it because we have that power that was given to us. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to share the power and the promise of the gospel. And speaking of that gospel, John tells us when Mary Magdalene encountered Jesus on Easter Sunday, she did not know that it was him until he called her by name. Do you recognize when Jesus calls you by name? He does. But sometimes we're so busy with life, we're so busy with everything going on around us, that we don't hear him. But he's there calling us, asking us to be with him, to sit with him, to pray with him. Hopefully we respond in faith, and hopefully we do listen for many different signs. Look for those signs as well. We look for signs of resurrection in places where life may not be the easiest to find it. Of course, we're asked to go out and be God's hands and feet wherever we go. On earth, we share in Christ's suffering so that we may share in his glory in heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mary received the grace to see the Lord on that Easter morning. She beheld the glory of God, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. But how can we encounter Jesus each day? Do we call on him? Do we ask him to come be with us? Do we listen to his word in the Bible? How can we prepare our hearts to receive him in the Eucharist? It's easy, by prayer. But we don't have to live through just prayer alone. We can live by example. We need to prepare our hearts each and every day for the coming of the Lord because we don't know when that time will come. But our reward will be an eternal amount of happiness. Happiness beyond anything that we could ever feel, see, or hold on to in this world. But remember, we don't have to live as though death is our master. Not at all. In light of the resurrection, we can begin to see the world over a period of time as a place of growth, a place of maturation towards something higher, 
something more permanent, and something more splendid. And that, of course, is heaven when we get to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bring our hearts and our petitions to the Lord, trusting that in his time and according to his will, he will answer every prayer. For the church, as she continues to proclaim the risen Christ in the word and deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, may the gospel be their guide as they govern their people and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, May Jesus, the suffering servant, bring them peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord make this time of joy in the resurrection one of growth and holy virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they soon experience the fullness of God's mercy in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Father in heaven, in your great kindness, please hear and answer the intentions we have brought before you today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel or be seated. Please stand. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us show each other the sign of peace. Please kneel or be seated once again. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Please stand and let us pray. Hear us, almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And May almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. St. Michael, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince, and the host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us kneel as we gather together to honor our mother and our perpetual health. We recall how she helped others. Her whole life was a lesson of love. Mother, perpetual health. Mary, you are a woman of steadfast faith. Your faith in Jesus never wavered. Model of all believers, pray to the Holy Spirit for us. Help us not only to accept all your Son teaches us, but to put that teaching into practice. Mother, As we continue to kneel, we continue our prayers. Mary, humble hand. Mother of perpetual health, your picture reminds us that we are to carry our cross as Jesus did. With courage he endured injustice, abandonment and betrayal, pain and suffering, even a criminal's death. Mary, we... Let us ask Mary to watch over all families. Mother of Perpetua.
let us renew our act of consecration. From the first moment of her existence, the Holy Spirit filled Mary with his love. By his power, she became the Virgin Mother of God. Through the same Holy Spirit, she became the perfect wife, the perfect mother. Let us imitate her generosity, her openness to the Holy Spirit, and say, Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your joy and your peace, with your power and your love, and with your constant presence within us. Receive the Holy Spirit. May he be with you to strengthen you, above you to protect you, before you to lead you, behind you to encourage you, within you to possess you totally. Through the prayers of our holy patron, St. Alphonsus, through the intercession of our Mother of Perpetual Health, through the merits of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, present in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain forever. Immac you Thank you.